Hey everyone, welcome back to another great week at Good News here at Freedom Baptist Church in our Children's Church Kids Zone. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Corinne Peacock and I'm the Director of Children's Ministry right here at Freedom. This is a great week for you to be here and I'm excited that you make it. We are here in Good News, week six of our eight week series. Before we get started, if you'll do me a favor, and if you need to go to the bathroom, get a quick drink, maybe you have one of your favorite toys or something that might be tempting to be distracting a little too close to you, go ahead and take care of all of those things because right now is the perfect time. Well, before we jump right in, let's look at our studio guidelines. Our first guideline is to be quiet. We need to stay quiet when people on the set are talking. Rule number two, let's pay attention to what those people are saying because they have something really important for every single person watching and I would hate for you to miss it. Rule number three, no touching. Let's make sure we keep our hands and feet to ourselves. Okay? If you're a little too close to somebody, spread out and give yourself some space. And rule number four, our last guideline is to have fun. We are going to have a great time here in Good News today. Well, let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for bringing us together for one more week of great news. God, you are the good news. Help us to pay attention. Help us to be good listeners. And help us to remember all the things that we're learning every week right here. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty. Well, like I said, I am so excited that you're here. Let's head over to the studio and see what's happening today. Good morning! I'm Tim Hunter, lead anchor. And I'm Trudy Grapevine. Today is a special broadcast because today we're getting the news from you. That's right. If you think you have a news story worth reporting, we're putting the number on your screen now. Feel free to call in. Oh, that sounds like our first call. Boy, that was quick. Oh, hello, you're on the air. Hi, I'm a huge fan of your show. Oh, thank you. Well, do you have any news to report? <laughs> yes, there's a carnival happening down the street for me. Really? Are there rides? Yes, I rode all the rides. They were awesome. Oh, well, are there games as well? Yes, I played all the games and they were a blast. Well, it, it sounds interesting. But since we can't see it, there's no way to know if it's actually true. And if we can't know if it's true, then we can't report it. That's Sorry. Right. Wait, Sorry. you can come to the carnival and see it for yourself. Here, I'll give you the address. It's no, don't bother. Years. I really doubt there's even a carnival. Uh, Let's hear from another caller. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, are you guys still looking for news to report? Yes, we are. What do you have for us? There's a big sale on canoes at the camping store. I just bought a canoe and brought it home. Wait, wait, wait. You expect us to believe that one, there's a sale, and two, that there's a canoe at your house? Um, yeah, the wow. canoe is now in my garage. Well, maybe, but since we can't see it, we don't have any proof, and we don't believe it. What? Yeah, and if we don't believe it, we can't report it. Sorry. But I'm telling the truth. I can send you a picture of the canoe I just bought, and you can call the camping store and ask about the sale. Their number is 8 Well, that was a complete waste of time. Yeah, sorry about that. Let's never do that again. Agreed. Wow, Whose who's idea, idea was that? A producer? Probably the producer. Oh, he messed up. ludicrous. I it happens all happened. the time. You should just listen to me more often. Oh, oh. I said that. Oh, now, <clears throat> whenever we have questions relating to the world of science, there's only one person qualified enough to answer those questions. It's Dr. Oppenheimerstein. Let's see what he's up to. So, what do we have here, Doctor? Oh, hello, Tim. Uh, this is a... I see, but what does it do? Well, I'm glad you asked. This device uses fire to show us sound waves. I play music through that speaker there, and the flames will get higher and lower, depending 
depending on the notes that are played. I'm sorry, that sounds too far-fetched. No, it works, really. You wait here and I'll start the music and show you. Well, I'm sorry, it doesn't seem to be working right now, and since I've never seen it work, I can't possibly trust it to work in the future. I don't believe you. Goodbye. <laughs> Now, this device was invented in 1904 by Heinrich Robert. Damn, why did you leave? Look, I told you it would work. Look, it's working. It's a bad day for news, Trudy. I know, I know. Sound waves and fire? <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. I have no idea. What was that? Is this the news? That still? is crazy. I don't even think it's still the news. Uh, it doesn't it's, even count as the news. Right. Unbelievable. You know. Horrible day for news. Oh. Hold on, we're gonna take a brief commercial break, but when we get back, we are going to see the incredible balancing skills of Bonnie, the balancing baronet. How about that? Hmm. Or will we? I doubt it. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? I wonder what's gonna happen next. Let's go ahead and stand up and we'll sing our song. And for our sin he bled and died he let himself be crucified Only Jesus and There's an empty grave where he once lay Now we are free, our dead is paid Who can wash away our sin And make us whole again Only Jesus Go ahead and have a seat for me. And then we're gonna head back to the studio and see if that plate spinner can keep track of all those plates. Hello again. 
again, we're actually not going to have time for the Bonnie the Balancing Baroness segment today. Sorry, Bonnie. Instead, we'd like to show you a special report from the Bible. Enjoy. Doubt. Doubt is something that everyone on the earth experiences. Doubt comes when we don't understand something or when we don't have enough information. But doubt really comes when we don't know for sure if something is true or not. When you have doubt, you may ask questions like, that sounds interesting, but is it true? Or, I don't know if that really happened. Can you prove it? Or even, I don't know what to believe. Can you help me? It's okay to have doubt, but only if it leads to questions that seek the truth. Hello, and welcome to my ongoing report focusing on the weeks after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Today's segment is about a very serious issue, a problem we all deal with at some point or another, doubt. When you doubt something, it means you're not sure if it's true or if you should believe it. Everyone experiences doubt at some point in life, even people back in the days when Jesus lived. In fact, even Jesus' disciples dealt with doubt, which leads me to the story for today. The story can be found in the book of John, chapter 20, starting in verse 19. And it begins during a very difficult time in the life of the disciples. Their Lord and Master, Jesus, had been arrested and tried as a criminal. Then he was put on a cross to die. And finally, he was buried in a tomb. Now, three days later, some women had come from the tomb saying it was empty and that Jesus was alive. In fact, Mary Magdalene claimed that she had actually seen Jesus. Well, at this point, the disciples were very confused. I mean, they didn't know what to believe. They saw Jesus die with their own eyes, yet the women claimed he was alive. The disciples had to have their doubts about what the women were saying. Could they really believe it? I mean, was it really true? Well, in the evening, all of the disciples gathered together in a room. Once they were there, they locked all the doors because they were afraid that the soldiers might come and kill them like they had killed Jesus. Well, while they were in the room, something incredible happened. Jesus suddenly appeared in the room. The disciples were amazed as Jesus spoke to them and showed them his wounds in his hands and his side to prove to them that he was Jesus, and that they weren't imagining things. Jesus really was there, and Jesus really was alive. All of the disciples were very, very excited. Well, not all of the disciples. You see, one of the disciples, whose name was Thomas, wasn't there when Jesus appeared. Everyone saw Jesus but him. Later, when the disciples saw Thomas, they told him about seeing Jesus. But instead of getting excited or sad about missing the chance to see Jesus, Thomas did something else. He doubted. He didn't believe what his friends were telling him. Here's what was said. We have seen the Lord. I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Now, we don't know why Thomas chose not to believe what the disciples had told him. But eight days later, Thomas got exactly what he was asking for. Once again, the disciples were gathered together inside a locked room. And this time, Thomas was with them. Just like before, Jesus suddenly appeared and greeted them. Then he spoke directly to Thomas. Peace be with you. Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side 
Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God! Thomas finally believed what the disciples had said. <laughs> Jesus was alive. Jesus then said to Thomas, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. As we look at this story, it's important to note that it's okay to have doubts. Your parents or pastor or teachers will never be angry if you have questions about things you don't understand. Also, Jesus won't be angry if you have doubts. Look at Thomas. Jesus didn't get mad at him for having doubts. In fact, he appeared to Thomas to help him overcome those doubts. Jesus loved Thomas, and he loves you and me. He wants us to feel great about believing in him, and he wants to help us when we have doubts. You know, we don't get to see Jesus in the same way that Thomas and the other disciples did. And from time to time, we will have questions and we will have doubts. It's during these moments that we should pray to God about those doubts. We should also talk to our parents or pastor and spend time reading the Bible. These are all ways to seek out the answers we need to overcome our doubts. Well, that's all for this segment. Remember, it's okay to have doubts. However, when you do, you need to seek answers. And ultimately, like Thomas, choose to believe. Ah, well, I see that everyone has doubts, but when we have doubts... We should seek out the answers instead of just staying doubtful. That's right. Wow, we apologize to our earlier callers that we hung up on. After today's show, we'll check on that carnival. And we'll check on that sale at the camping store. And I'll also see if Dr. Oppenheimerstein is willing to show me that Rubens tube thing. Oh, yeah. And in the future, we'll try to do a better job of handling our doubts. And now, let's check in with Fernando the Weather Puppet. Fernando, what's the forecast for today? It was supposed to be nice today, but now it's very, very... <laughs> cold! <laughs> Thanks, Fernando. And thank you for watching. Please stay tuned after the credits for some late breaking news. Wow. Yeah, man. Have you guys ever had doubts? Have you ever wondered if something was really true? Even if someone told you something amazing and you said, I don't know, I didn't see it. So maybe it didn't really happen. Maybe you're remembering it wrong. Imagine being one of the disciples, talking to Thomas, telling him that we saw Jesus, the door was locked, the windows were shut, we were so afraid the soldiers were gonna come, and then suddenly he was here. He didn't need a door, he didn't need a window, he was here. And there was so many disciples telling Thomas this story, and Thomas said, you know, I don't think so. Not until I can touch his hands where the nails went in. Not until I can feel in his side where they pierced him with the sword. Not until I have proof will I believe. But you know what? Jesus was kind and gracious. And even though Jesus doesn't appear like that today for us, he still gives us plenty of proof to help us settle those doubts. It's okay to have doubts and have questions. We shouldn't just believe everything blindly. If I told you that the sky was orange and raining gumballs, you'd probably have some doubts. You'd want to see it for yourself. And that wouldn't be true. Spoiler alert. The sky is not orange at my house and it is not raining gumballs. But if I tell you that Jesus died on the cross and rose again so that we can go to heaven, that is true. That happened. Let's go ahead and have it stand up and we'll sing our second song.
Everybody say hey, hands in the air with a wave. Lift it to the one who can say, to the son who was done with the grave. Hosanna to his name. Everything wrong that I'll ever do, everything wrong that I've ever done. Taking all away, taking all away, yeah, by the blood of God's Son. I said, everything wrong that I'll ever do, everything wrong that I've ever done. It was taking all away, taking all away, yeah, by the price he paid. So everybody say, hey, hands in the air with a wave. Lift it to the one who can say, to the son who was done with the grave. Hosanna to his name. Yeah, everything he said was true, he never lied Took the punishment for sin, died and rose again Now he's at the Father's side Oh, everything he said, yeah, everything he said was true, he never lied Took the punishment for sin, died and rose again So we could be alive So everybody say, hey, hands in the air with a way Say hey, hands in the air with the waves And lift it to the one who can say To the son who was done with the grave Hosanna to his name Hands in the air with the waves And lift it to the one who can say To the son who was done with the grave Hosanna to his name Hosanna to his name throughout the week. Any of you guys sing these songs? You find yourself humming them? They're kind of catchy. Well, let's look at our main point for today. Good morning. You're watching Good News with your anchors, Tim Hunter and Trudy Grapevine. And Rick Rexworth on sports. Will Wilwright, traffic. Dr. Oppenheimerstein on science. Cooking in the kitchen with Dinah. Your Action News reporter, J.J. Barnstormer. And Fernando the Weather Puppet on weather. It's the best morning news show on this channel at this time in the Tri-Cities area. Today's show is brought to you by Knowledge, reminding you that it's okay to have doubts, but we should always seek answers when we have doubts. So our main point says, I will seek answers when I have doubts. So instead of just saying, there's no way that's impossible, it can't happen, we can look for the answers. We can find them in the Bible. We can ask our parents. We can ask our teachers. We can ask our pastors. We have lots of people that we can ask these questions to. So I will seek answers when I have doubts. That's a lot of words. I'm gonna say it one more time for you and then we'll all say it together. I will seek answers when I have doubts. Ready? Let's all do it together. One, two, three. I will seek answers when I have doubts. Do it together one more time. Ready? One, two, 
Three, I will seek answers when I have doubts. I really want you guys to get this one because sometimes they're really simple and this one, I got a little tongue tied on. So I'm really hoping you guys are getting this. Let's go ahead, boys, can you say it for me? One, two, three. I will, good job. All right, girls, let's show them how it's done. You ready? One, two, three. I will, good job, guys. Great job. Let's look at our memory verse for today. So this series, we have a news van race to report the news. And it is one of the silliest races that I have ever seen. Let's see who's racing today. What's this? Respected reporter and news anchor Tim Hunter's on the scene with some late breaking news. We need a news van quick. It's time for Tim Hunter's news van race to report the news. Cheer for the news van that you think will get to me first. Green or yellow? Ready? Set, go! They're both going down the center. They're trying to get the roundabout first, but both of them are at the roundabout. Oh no, they can barely keep on the, the, the street. They're driving through the city park. They're off the map, folks. This is crazy. It's pandemonium, and they're all the way back in the beginning. They come back around. It looks like there's a weather report in the area of some baseball-sized hail. Oh! oh my goodness. It looks like green's going to take it. What's this? Yellow can fly. It jumps to the lead. Is it going to be green? Is it going to be yellow? Is it going to be green? It's, it's yellow, yellow wins! And now I can finally report the news. <laughs> this just in, I'm wonderful. In fact, I'm so wonderful I'd do a dance if I could move my elbows and knees. Thanks for watching Tim Hunter's News Van Race of Newsiness. Goodbye. That softball size hail strikes again, but yay yellow! If you cheered for yellow, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a high five, say good job me. You did a great job. Now's the time where we normally collect our offering. So if you would like to give offering, you can still do that. It's right here on the screen. While we're talking about things on the screen, do me a favor. If you can, please make sure that you have liked and followed our Facebook page. As well as if you would make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is where all of the information comes from and where you're gonna find the most recent things about our church and our program, and I don't want you to miss it. Well, we've had a great week right here at week six of our good news. We only have two more weeks to go. We've seen Jesus come into town like a hero, like a king with a parade, and we've seen him beaten, we've seen him arrested, we've seen him crucify, we have seen him rise again, we have seen him show back up to his disciples. We have seen so many things in this short period of time that I can't wait to see what happens next. I hope you'll join us again. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you again for another great week here at Children's Church. Thank you for all that you have for us. Help us to remember to look for answers when we have doubts. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you guys have a great week and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Everyone in the news business knows you have to train to become a good reporter. So answer these questions and test your skills with some reporter training.
great job. And remember, to be a good reporter, you need to keep on learning and keep on training.